God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Good morning and welcome to St. Clement's Church Oxford Online. Welcome if you're a St. Clement's regular or if you think you're an irregular. Welcome if you're feeling old, feeling young, feeling up or down. Welcome if you're on your own or your home is just a bit too full. And welcome as we gather to worship the living God together, who and wherever we are. In this all age, all generations online service. It's great you're with us. I'm Philip Lockley, curate of St. Clement's, and with Freya Sidhu, our children and families worker, Dave Burt, our youth worker, and Kay Rumford, a member of our church family. Together, we'll be leading our service today. As ever, our sung worship will be led by members of our worship band and, backed by popular demand, members of our junior church. Our scripture today continues our recent theme of hospitality and hope in the Bible. As we move into the New Testament and hear the story of everyone's favourite tree climbing tax collector, Zacchaeus, Kay will be sharing with us two reflections on this memorable story of when Jesus invited himself to Zacchaeus' house, scandalising the neighbourhood by seeking his hospitality. And Zacchaeus responds by taking an entirely new direction in his life, discovering hope as salvation came to his house. Besides this, we'll have both a dramatic reading and Playmobil intercessions contributed by members of Junior Church. And Freya is back with more card and more cutting, less folding this time. So have your scissors and card at the ready. All that's to come. Let's now begin our worship with the Church of England's Prayer of the Day, the Collect. As ever, please, wherever you are, join in the words in gold. We pray together. Gracious Father, by the obedience of Jesus, you brought salvation to our wayward world. Draw us into harmony with your will, that we may find all things restored in him, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We sing our opening song of worship.
We come now to our Bible reading, read by members of our junior church. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house tonight, today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now, I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is son of the son of man has come. The son of man came to seek and to save the lost. The story of Zacchaeus is one of the most well known in the Bible. We may be familiar with it from our junior church days. We may have sung about Zacchaeus, drawn him, acted out the story. In fact, if we'd been in church today, we probably have one of you up in the pulpit pretending to be Zacchaeus in a tree with someone else walking by pretending to be Jesus. Because what we all remember about Zacchaeus is that he was small and that he climbed a tree so he could see Jesus. But his story is about so much more than that. With Zacchaeus we see an example of God's extraordinary love and of how we should respond, a story of hospitality and hope. It begins with Jesus. He was passing through Jericho, an important trading town, on his way to Jerusalem. In fact, this was his last journey, a journey which would end in his death. He may have been aware of what he was facing, his mind full of where he was going and what he would have to do. But his reputation had gone before him. For three years he'd been preaching and healing and caring. A crowd of people in Jericho wanted to see him. Zacchaeus wanted to see him. We've probably all been part of big crowds at some point in our lives, although it may be hard to believe that at the moment as we live our socially distanced lives. We may have been part of a crowd waiting to see a famous person as here in Jericho. My great uncle was mayor of Chesterfield during the Queen's Silver Jubilee year and entertained her to lunch. My family arrived very early to make sure we were at the front of the crowd before the balcony where she'd appear. I suspect that may have happened here. The rumour going before, Jesus is coming, let's get to the front. But Zacchaeus couldn't get to the front. He was both small and unpopular because he was a chief tax collector, probably with junior tax collectors under him, rich from his job and possibly from taking a bit on the side, identified with the hated Romans. So no one was going to make room for him. You can imagine him at the back of the crowd, peeking through gaps and jumping to see whether he could get a look. When that didn't work, he climbed a tree. That way he'd be able to see Jesus. And he did see Jesus. But more significantly, Jesus saw him. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, really ordered him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Zacchaeus. There is something very powerful about names. Any good networker will learn people's names and use them frequently. It says, I know you, you're important to me. Conversely, taking away someone's name is a punishment, saying you don't matter. If you watched the film of Les Miserables with the church a couple of years ago, or have seen it otherwise, uh, or the show, you may recall the scene when the prisoner is released and reclaims his identity. I am no longer a number. I am not 24601. I am Jean Valjean. I don't know how Jesus knew Zacchaeus' name, but his use of it is very moving. He was saying, 
whoever you are and whatever you've done, I know you and I want to be with you. In Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1, God says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. This is what Jesus was saying to Zacchaeus as he commanded him to come down and take him home. What he says to us all, I have called you by name. You are mine. I have called you by name. You are mine. We come now to a time of prayer and we're going to take that idea of the importance of names, Jesus addressing Zacchaeus by name and using the names of other figures in the Bible to represent the people we want to pray for this week. The name of persons in the Bible can become for us the names of all the people God knows by name at the center of our prayers. If while you pray at home, you feel drawn to pray for someone you know, experiencing a situation like the Bible character we're picturing, why not write their name down and remember them in prayer throughout the week ahead? As we pray to the words, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. Let's pray. Lord God, we remember Mary and Joseph and their child Jesus, forced to become refugees, made fearful by the need to the herald, anxious to, for the safety of their, their child. Lord, this week we name in prayer all families with children, for parents anxious about decisions, income, the future. We pray for all households where there is conflict from stress, for all homes that feel empty, for everyone feeling a long way from loved ones. Lord, we pray for peace, for safety, for times of reunion and broken bonds repaired. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord God, we remember Daniel, who continue to pray to you, and put you first in his life, even when threatened by the powerful. Lord, this week we name in prayer all who fear to practice their faith in public, who are made afraid in workplaces, homes, communities across the world. Lord, we pray for your spirit of freedom to be at work in their hearts, in the hearts of persecutors, in the hearts of decision makers so that tolerance and truth may be realised through all the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we remember Martha and Mary and Lazarus, the friends of Jesus, whose home was a place of care and concern in the face of sickness and death. Lord, this week we name in prayer all who are unwell, suffering body, mind or spirit, and any who are approaching death. We pray for those sick with the effects of coronavirus, and we pray for all who care for them in hospitals, surgeries and care homes. Lord, bring your healing and wholeness and give peace to the anx anxious and afraid. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we remember Solomon and the difficult but wise decision he was called to make. Lord, this week we name in prayer all who are having to make difficult decisions in national and local government, in businesses and workplaces, in schools, colleges and universities. Lord, we pray for wisdom and for justice, mercy and humility. Give rest in times of tiredness and renew their strength for the day ahead. Lord, oh. in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Finally, Lord God, we remember Paul, whose plans were changed by unexpected events like shipwreck, and still his faith was not shaken. He kept going with you. Lord, this week we name in prayer all who are dealing with dramatic change to their plans in life. For anyone facing the end of a job, 
the loss of hopes for the future, for all feeling shipwrecked, cast on a strange shore, not where they expected to be. Lord, we pray they will know you are with them, guiding, comforting, showing the way forward. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Let your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 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 Yeah! <laughs>
We left Zacchaeus up the tree with Jesus below commanding him to come down immediately. And why? I must stay at your house today. This is a kind of reverse offer of hospitality. Jesus is inviting himself to Zacchaeus, something which would seem odd to some people. Surely Jesus should wait for an invitation. Maybe we should all be braver about inviting ourselves into others' homes. Anyway, Zacchaeus didn't mind. In fact, he welcomed him gladly at once. His reaction was one of joy that Jesus should come, uh, or choose to come and spend time with him. Moreover, he appears to have taken him home immediately. No apparent messages ahead to tell the servants to make preparations. Jesus was going to have to take Zacchaeus as he found him. This is not how many people prepare for guests. I had a lovely aunt who loved entertaining. However, it would take her the whole of that day and possibly the one before to cook and clean and get the house and meal perfect for her guests. And she was a great host. But Jesus doesn't expect us to clean up our lives before he comes to us. He comes to us so that we can clean up our lives as here with Zacchaeus. We can't make ourselves fit to receive Jesus. He is perfect and we are not. We mess up and get things wrong. We may not consider ourselves to be as sinful as it appears Zacchaeus was. We may not have cheated anyone out of money, but we don't live as God would want us to live. Only Jesus can save us from that mess. He didn't come to save the perfect, as he said here, for the Son of Man came to seek and save what was lost. This encounter is a human example of the parables Jesus told about lost things, the lost queen, the lost sheep. The woman turned her house upside down to find the coin she'd lost. The shepherd left his 99 sheep to find the one which was lost. Jesus came to save the lost. Zacchaeus, us. And Zacchaeus understood this as the people of Jericho didn't. They saw Jesus going with the man they considered to be a sinner and grumbled. But Zacchaeus was ready to receive Jesus and maybe they were not. They hadn't got the point. We're not told what Jesus said to Zacchaeus or whether he'd previously heard Jesus speak and was already reviewing his life and what was wrong with it. What we are told is that his life was turned upside down. John wrote in his first letter, chapter three, verse one, how great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Incredibly joyously, we are God's children. I love the use of the word lavish in that passage. God's love is extravagant, extraordinary, overpowering. It's how he loves us and how he loved Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus responded in kind, look Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. His response is also lavish. It's extravagant, it's sacrificial. He wouldn't be left with much once he'd given all that away. His life is turned around. He acknowledges his sin and makes restitution far more than the law required. He gives away half his possessions. He understands what the rich young ruler whom Jesus met in the previous chapter of Luke's Gospel didn't, when Jesus told him to sell everything you have and give to the poor. That man didn't understand and couldn't make that sacrifice. Zacchaeus did understand and did make that sacrifice. As John went on to say in, his, in the same letter, chapter four, verse 11, dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought also to love each other. God loves us lavishly, extravagantly, enough to die for us, so we sh also should love each other, everyone offering to them the same acceptance and hope that Jesus offered to Zacchaeus, the same material generosity and recompense as Zacchaeus offered to the people of Jericho, the same sacrificial love as took Jesus to the cross.
reckless love for us. God's love is something that we all have and it's something that we can all share. Let me show you what happens when we step out and share God's love and Susie is going to help me with this. Hi Susie! Hello Freya! Lovely to see you. We often miss each other. Yes we do. Well thank you for helping me today. No problem. What have you got there Freya? So I have this piece of paper and it's going to represent God's love. Now God's love here has four corners. How many corners would I have if I cut one 
off and gave it to you, Susie. Well, four take away one is three, so you would have three corners. Okay, well, let's try it. Here you go, Susie. Oh, thanks. I want to share God's love with you by giving you one of the corners. Oh, thank you. Having given one away, I should have less. So let's just check. One, two, three, four, five. I have even more than when I started. Whoa. Susie, how many corners did I give you? Uh, one. Could you count for me just to make sure? One, two, three. You received more too. If I gave another corner away, the same thing would happen. God's love doesn't get smaller, it gets multiplied. That's such a great image. Susie, would you like to join with me in saying thank you to God for his love and saying sorry for when we get it wrong? Good idea, yes please. God, we are sorry for all the times when we have not shared your love with others. Thank you, Lord, that your love doesn't get used up. Thank you that you can multiply what we have to give and make it greater. Please help us to see the opportunities and give us the courage to share your love with those around us. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your help, Susie. Take care. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. We're coming now towards the end of our All Age service. Thank you so much for joining us. And we very much hope you will join us again next week. Do remember the new sheet sent out by email on Friday. This week's edition covers next week too, as the parish office is closed this coming week. Just to let you know, in the new sheet, you'll find a short note on developing plans to reopen the church. As you'll be aware, places of worship are permitted to reopen this month for private prayer and services, providing certain conditions are met and government guidance is followed. Our wardens and risk management team are working hard on what arrangements may be possible at St. Clement's, and we hope to share more detailed plans in due course. Thank you so much to those of you who have already been in touch with the parish office about volunteering to help with opening the church building when that happens. We're looking to build up a team of volunteers to enable this. So if you think you could be a part of that, please do get in touch again by emailing the parish office contact details on the screen. Coming up this week, don't forget, we'll be meeting for morning prayer on Tuesday and Wednesday at nine o'clock in the St. Clement Zoom room, 9 a.m. And the Zoom room is, of course, the place many of us in the church family continues to meet together at around 10 o'clock in the morning each Sunday for virtual coffee, company and a catch up before many of us go on to watch and worship together at 10.30. If you're new to St. Clement's or this is the first time you've watched, you're really welcome to join us. So if you'd like to join us and or also receive the new sheet, please do email us at the usual address and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. We come to our final song, the recently premiered and much acclaimed composition of members of our junior church. Whatever we're going through, whatever we're carrying, whatever we think is going wrong with the world, let's remind ourselves and proclaim together, God is the best, God is the king, he is the king of everything.
we end with a prayer of blessing. God the Father, who has given to his Son the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Christ as Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.